Hello guys, welcome back to Metacraft. My name is Nbents, and the first thing I want to start with today is I want to show off what I just made. Uh, actually, I guess I'm going to show you two things I just made. This is a little sneak peek right now, a little work in progress. Oh, geez, Beagle's on. Hey, it's pretty early for him to be on. Uh, let me fly up through here. That's the that's the first thing. That that that's that is new right here. Actually, this was not like this before, but I'm still working on it. It's a work in progress. We're gonna make a really cool little uh, area to hang out in right there. Uh, but up here, you can see I got a little glass staircase. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Jeez! Okay, we're lagging all over the place. That's not good. All right, turn up. Turnip's loading uh, a mob farm right now, and Beagle just hopped on, so uh, filming a little clip real quick. So yes, clearly we have broken through bedrock. We found a nice little area. We are going to fly over here and go upwards, and yes, this is exactly what you thought it was. It is a gold farm. This had to happen ASAP. Uh, this is a very simple farm. You see how easy and small the design is. It's literally just one small platform, one small circular platform for zombies to spawn on. There is a turtle egg right there at the middle. They are attracted towards it. Boom. We kill them with our looting three sword and we get so much gold from this. So many levels. I have a sorter down there to keep flesh because I like to trade flesh to clerics. So we've got flesh, uh, golden nuggets, gold ingots, and then that last one right there is for any zombie pigment heads if we get any. I actually would like to see if we've gotten any so far. One. Awesome. Which would actually technically mean we've gotten three. Right. One, two, three. Awesome. But yeah, uh, we have a nice gold farm here to start us off. The next thing on the list that we have to get done is a bartering farm. Once the bartering farm is done, we're going to have to then set up a shop. So those are the goals for this episode today. All right, time to go. Check this out. Here we go. Boom. Whee. So satisfying. It almost feels like it'll never end, but it will. Here it comes. So satisfying. Oh. Okay. I forgot to mention in the last clip that the gold farm design is made by Voltrox, a YouTuber. They make awesome videos. They're short tutorials on farms like gold farms, iron farms. They're very sensible, easy to build designs. I really like them. Uh, He's been doing it for a good while now, so get, go check it out. I think I'm going to put the video in the description. Heyo! <laughs> this is a theme for this episode. <laughs> Filming clips and Beagle says hi. <laughs> Alright, um, so I've been doing a lot of gold uh, farming, I guess you could say. I've been killing a lot of zombified piglins. And last episode, I actually forgot to show off the honey farm that I built here it is voila looks very nice I like blackstone a lot been mining a bunch of it and using a bunch of it this season uh, we've got a honey bottle farm right here and a honeycomb farm right here they pretty much look the same from the outside but the output is different I need to put these glass bottles back into the system and there's some honeycomb we only have a little bit uh, stashed up here because <clears throat> it's all in the shop right now. Uh, would you look at that? My farm actually produced slime. Yay! We love slime. We love slime. <clears throat> but yeah, I've been gathering a bunch of gold uh, off camera, obviously. And I have been bartering with it. So this is uh, a simple bartering farm. It's Logical Geek Boys. It's uh, very smart on its own. Um, I thought there was a problem with the design, but then I just realized that I needed a block right here. And the only way to get it in there was by shoving it in with a piston because these guys are too tall when you have a carpet there. So that was my 
fault, but I fixed it. So later this episode, I'm going to decorate all of this to make it look much better and hide all of the redstone back there. And we're also going to do the same for a item sorter that I'm going to have over here with all of the items that you can get from bartering. That was anticlimactic. Bartering! Also kind of anticlimactic because I have emptied these chests and brought the loot over to our new shop in the shopping district. So I gotta admit, when it comes to building unique architecture in Minecraft or like exteriors to buildings, I'm not very good. Uh, I have no problem thinking of ideas or themes though. And that's kind of what I leaned on in making this shop. You know, with the honey farm that I did, or the honey shop that I did, I just built a big beehive instead of making something cool like what Turnip Man or what Lady Zentra did or what Beagle did with his uh, pirate shop. Uh, so I kind of thought about a theme instead. I thought, like, what is the common theme here with all the items that I'm selling? I'm selling gold and then all the items that you can sell from bartering and whatever. Oh look, she's selling terracotta now. That's good. Uh, <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'm killing a bunch of zombified piglins, right, to get there. So I thought, okay, piglins. Let's think about a theme with piglins. And I kind of shortened it to pigs, and I thought, okay, pigs. And then I thought, ooh, piggy bank. That's a great name for the shop, piggy bank, because I'm selling gold and all the other things that pigs... You know, you can get from the piglins, and that, that's, that, I thought that was a great idea. The only thing left was the shop. And of course, because I am terrible at building and I'm completely unoriginal, as you can see, I did the beehive, and now... <laughs> I was going to show that at first, but there it is. The entrance to Piggy Bank <laughs> is Piggy Bank's butthole. And, hang on, it looks like there's a message there left for me. And you enter. Welcome to Piggy Bank. Wait, she's on the way in. You enter. These are my own jokes, and I'm laughing at them. Oh, I, I literally, and I giggled the whole time I was building this. Oh, okay, compose yourself. <laughs> compose yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, mm, The piggy had a... Whoopsie. <laughs> and that's how you get inside. Oh, uh, you climb up, it's whoopsie. So you better wipe your shoes. Okay. My God. <laughs> I bet that was Regal. Uh, I think you have to kind of hold shift while climbing up this ladder. Because, yeah, see, that can be kind of hard right there. But if you hold shift, you can slide through. All right, yeah, the interior isn't that gross. You are walking over <laughs> the shit carpet. <laughs> Uh, but you can see what I'm selling. I'm, this is going to come with 1.16.2 because you, <clears throat> you don't get them from bartering just yet. Uh, one diamond per stack. Look at this. You get crazy amounts of that. I mean, gravel. I, I put in a bunch of gravel that I already mined. I should probably take it back, honestly. Like, you know, half and half is what I should do. But I just felt like having stock for people. Uh, and you never know. Could just make diamonds, and I can always get more gravel. <clears throat> We have leather. I decided to go one diamond for 32 at first because it's not often that people need leather and I don't want to make leather like inexpensive, but I have so much leather here and I are, and I have surplus leather still, so I'm tempted to just sell it one for 64, but then we have one diamond per stack for string. I don't know if somebody will ever need string, but if they do... Boom, one diamond for a stack of it. Uh, you know, I don't know if anybody will ever pay for soul sand. It's so abundant, but one diamond for two stacks. Let's see if it happens. I might end up using this for uh, soul speed instead. We'll see. <clears throat> one diamond per 16 fire charges. I think that's fair. Uh, I don't know why, but I think it is. Uh, one diamond per stack right now of blackstone. Because, again, in 1.16.2, I will be able to get more blackstone 
But for now, I think it's fair to ask for a diamond for a stack of blackstone at the moment. Uh, I don't know why, but I feel like crying obsidian is valuable. So I went with one diamond for eight. Uh, I'm still not sure about it, but yeah. And then I went for one diamond for 16 obsidian, but I'm feeling like both of these are too expensive. I feel like I have to have those. Yeah, I feel like that just is too much. I think I'd make more diamonds by making these less expensive. Let's grab those and let's fix that. But then let's come up here and see we've got one diamond for eight gold blocks at the moment. Uh, sure, as I get more, I'll be able to provide it at a cheaper price. So far, no sales anywhere in the shop. But that's all right. We just built it last night, so maybe 12 hours ago. So it's not been up for very long. So we'll give people time to hop on the server. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm going to collect these signs, though, because I want people to be able to experience the uh, <laughs> glory. And it's full uh, and it's full glory. Experience the glory and it's full glory. Derp. 32. 16. Pew! You go there. You go there. Eh? 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 <laughs> okay. Ooh! Oh, yeah! By the way, we have the squad chilling here at our nether base. We got the pig. And the piglin of the zombified variety. They uh, might as well be co-CEOs or something. I mean, realistically, Malik and I are the co-CEOs. So they can be the co-co-CEOs. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Aww. <laughs> That's such a nice way to start this clip. My smile has never been so big. I mean, it's always been like the same, you know, it's just stuck like this. Ooh, I got some diamonds apparently in there. Let's go. All right. Uh, yeah, so Malik Blishtar. Speaking of Malik, uh, they have returned to the server. And they have begun undertaking the large project of this area, which is a witch farm. They have begun excavation, a small part of a massive area. Not quite as big as he initially wanted. He came back to the server with a bunch of ambition. He was looking to take up pretty much almost all the way to here and then, like, out to here he wanted to make it really big and then imagine that and then extended oh little leg and then extended all the way to over there so he's been working on that off and on i've helped a little bit i'll be you know working on it off and on but it's just going to be a long-term project as you can see so uh i'll probably give you periodic uh updates on that one okay let's see what we got I'm assuming he really needed gold, so he probably had gotten gold. There was nothing in there. Why am I looking in there? Uh, oh, I also know he needed blackstone. Oh, 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 oh. That's amazing. I doubt I doubt he buy any of these, but let's just check. Just do our due diligence, you know, and just peeping. Side looking around. All right, awesome. Okay, maybe he needed some gold too. Okay, no, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. That is profit. Now, it, I I say this, you know, not 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 like that negatively, but unfortunately, I do have to split the diamonds with Malik, even though, again, I've done all of the work here. So we decided early in the season that we were going to split everything, you know, split a base and 
therefore split resources and shops and uh, money. So, you know, I mean, I'm going to put all that right in there, but it's on camera right there that we made four diamond blocks, so I know that I owe him two diamond blocks. That is so, so good. Oh, the piggy. <laughs> I'm staring at a butthole! Uh, okay. <laughs> the piggy is going to be very profitable. I love you, piggy. Oh! So if you've gotten to this point in the video, I hope that means that you've been enjoying it so far and that you feel you've been entertained. Uh, I regret to inform you that the remaining clips that I have for the video have corrupted audio. So I'm going to just have to commentate over them and put some music in the background right there. All right, and hopefully that should make for a somewhat pleasant viewing experience, even though the commentary isn't live. I can still tell you pretty much what I was saying and provide hopefully some of the humor that occurred in those moments as well. So here I'm explaining that it had been a couple days since I had actually been able to be on the server since the first day there was some issues with my connection, maybe something was wrong with the player data and the uh, server files. Anyway, that got fixed eventually, and then the next day, 1.16.2 dropped. So because Beagle lives on the other side of the planet from me, uh, he couldn't sign on to update the realm so I couldn't get on to the realm all day the day before which is actually yesterday as well so as you can see though I actually got the set up for all the items that you could barter with in 1.16.2 here uh, and I got a fair bit of those items already and stocked the shop up with them However, because of 1.16.2 dropping, there was changes to what can and can't be bartered with. Uh, magma cream can no longer be acquired through bartering, and neither can glowstone dust. Right here, you see me running around because I'm all confused. I had some spectral arrows on me uh, to replace the item filter for glowstone with, but I was fighting ghasts and I didn't realize that when I shot my bow that the game had decided to use those spectral arrows there to shoot at the ghasts. So anyhow, I got the spectral arrows out of my wallet as I call it and I, oh, well look at that, I'm a rhymer, a wallet as I call it. And I went up to the back area of the item sorter to replace those items. I'm so excited because Blackstone is an item that you can get from bartering, and I mined so much Blackstone before the update came. I mined 47,000 Blackstone. I showed a screenshot at the end of the first episode of that stat, and it's just way too much Blackstone to have to mine. I made that huge pathway. I've used a bunch of Blackstone in my base. Uh, also in some of this nether base, you see a bunch of Blackstone used. And then also I'm now selling Blackstone. So the fact that it's available through bartering now is a game changer, a life changer, and I could not be more excited about that. So I'm showing off here that I decided to throw iron nuggets and ender pearls, which you can both get through bartering, just into some lava, just throw them away because we already have an ender ender in the end. <laughs> and we have an iron farm that is very, very productive. And it's also in the spawn chunk, so nobody even needs to AFK there. And now I'm kind of showing off well, I don't really know if it's showing off, but I'm explaining that I rigged up my own little system. I didn't look online for any help on how to make a good sorter for potions and books and whatever, so I just figured it out on my own. Got a decent little system. It, it messes up sometimes, but for the most part, it's like a 95% accuracy with placing things into the correct chests. So I'm fine with that. So I'm just coming around here to the front, replacing those items uh, in the item frames. So now I'm turning around to demonstrate the system that I set up for evenly dispersing gold ingots throughout the different droppers. It's a very simple basic system, just a minecart hopper that pulls items out of this chest and then I flick a lever and the hopper minecart goes off and evenly disperses through different uh, hoppers that lead into the droppers. Hopper, dropper, dropper, hopper. <laughs> so I also have a switch or a lever below that lever that actually turns on and off the entire system itself 
Uh, it is his Logical Geek Boy's design, as I said earlier in the video, so it does have a smart switch for if things are overflowing, it can fix itself. But I want it to be able to control the whole system from the front myself as well. So we have that option now. Excitement ensued as I saw my first Blackstone coming through the system that I did not have to manually mine myself. As you can see, 47,000, almost 48,000 manual Blackstone blocks mined myself. These piglins are going to save my Minecraft life. And speaking of saving Minecraft lives, my partner this season of Metacraft, Malik, made his return to the server as I announced earlier this episode. However, he also made just as quick of an exit. He was digging out some of the hole when he broke his netherite pickaxe, and I can only assume was pretty upset about that and left the server and has not returned since then. Uh, I decided that I would take it upon myself since I know that they really don't like the grind that it is to go and find ancient debris to get netherite ingots, that I would do it myself. So here's a bit of an explodey montage while I explain some other things to you guys. So I'm starting to get afraid that I'm going to run out of beats pretty soon. All of these beats are beats that I made myself. Also, how devastating is this? This was the most unlucky strip of TNT I've ever blown up. Look, I knocked down one massive wall of lava, and then I dig past it to see that I didn't just knock down that massive wall of lava, I knocked down another massive wall of lava, and then behind that one was another massive wall of lava. It was pretty atrocious, and I spent probably like 10 minutes trying to clear as much of it out as I could, and I ultimately only found one piece of ancient debris from that strip of mining. It was devastating. I also want to share some of my experience of getting all of the piglins into their spots for the bartering farm or bartering hall whatever you want to call it, I don't mind. Because if you made it to this point in the video, you kind of deserve to get some sort of knowledge or something that you can use in the future out of it, I feel like, since I'm a little bit embarrassed that the audio was corrupted and I have to do this like this anyway. So I'll start with this. If you're planning on making a bartering farm, you should definitely make sure that you build it in another waste biome or one of the either crimson or warped forest biomes where piglins can actually spawn. You don't want to build one in a soul sand valley like I did where they don't spawn and you also definitely don't want to build it next to a nether fortress because I did so and the amount of times that I actually lost piglins to blazes that were shooting at me but ultimately hit the piglins and angered them to run and fall into lava or just die it, it, it happened way too many times and it hurt my soul every single time it happened. Uh, I had to get eight piglins, only eight, and the whole process I think took me somewhere around four hours. That's including a couple of like 15, 20 minute breaks that I just had to take for mental health because as I was going through the process of wasting gold to lure in piglins that would ultimately kill themselves or die to a gas blasting them in the back of the head, I was finding myself very close to raging and you never want to do that, especially when you're playing such a innocent game as Minecraft. But I will say, moving entities is one of the toughest things or most frustrating and agitating tasks in all of Minecraft. So. Uh, make sure that if you're going to take on a project like this that you're in a good state of mind. You don't want to be having a bad day and then try to move a bunch of piglins into their place. You might end up with a hole in your monitor, so just keep that in mind. I think that the best way to sum all that information up is to say location, location, location. If you put your farm in a good place, it should be easy to bring the piglins into their chambers. If you put it into a bad place, well, you'll have a bad time like I did. So you can see here I decided to go back to the starter district base to say hello to Dinnerbone and to smelt up the netherite scraps there instead of going back to the main base. I miss these guys and wanted to say hey to them and see how things are. They're doing alright, they didn't say much. Next was a stop at Turnip's Books of Magic store because I didn't have either a Fortune 3 or a Silk Touch book for Malik's pickaxe and I didn't know which one he actually wanted so I had to buy one of each. 
Next, I went back to our base and I left the netherite pickaxe with efficiency five on breaking three and mending on it, right below his two diamond blocks that I owe him, which I stuck his fortune three and silk touch books on those as well. So next time he signs in, he's gonna have a little goodie bag for him waiting for him to use it. Lastly, I went back to the store in the shopping district to stick some spectral arrows in there for the price of two diamonds a stack. And then I also stuck Soul Speed 3 books in there for four diamonds a book. Based off of my first bartering session in 1.16.2, I think that all the prices that I decided on earlier in the episode were actually really good prices and I'm going to keep them exactly where they all are. We'll just keep our eye on how each different item does and make adjustments if we need to in the future. So, we have made it through this episode successfully, even with the technical difficulties on my end. I think it came out alright, even though we had to jump over that hurdle. I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of difficult to make, so you could definitely make me feel better by liking the video and subscribing to my channel for more. The next episode is going to take a little bit longer than this one did to produce because there's a wide variety of different things that I want to work on on the server and I want to get all those things wrapped up into one video to show you guys. So until next time, I'm going to sit here, I mean, I'm going to sit here at the gold farm and I'm going to get some gold and stuff so I can barter and then I can get more items to get more diamonds and then those diamonds can get me more items. And then those more items can make me more shops and more games. And then those more shops and those more games can make me even more diamonds. Okay, I've said too much. See you next time. Bye.